and welcome back to the Block IoT. Today's video is a quick follow-up to one of our previous tutorials where we showed you how to use the analog inputs of a Siemens Logo Mini PLC with the Home Assistant platform. As you may know, Home Assistant is a very powerful and popular home automation system or platform. Many sensors, actuators, devices, and sensors can be integrated into home assistants to perform certain tasks for home automation system. But the good news is home assistant also supports MQTT, which we discussed in the previous videos. Using MQTT in home assistant will let you connect and integrate many industrial devices into this platform as well. So just to get an understanding what we are going to discuss in today's video, make sure you have checked the previous video and I'll put a link to that tutorials for your reference. Today, we will be sending control commands from a Home Assistant dashboard or any other MQTT device to the logo. Particularly, we will create an MQTT switch in the Home Assistant to control the four physical outputs of the Siemens logo device, which are named as Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 from a Home Assistant dashboard. By the way, we have a whole series of tutorials on Siemens logo ranging from the beginner to the advanced levels. So if this is your first time here, make sure you check them all out. Now without further ado, let's get started with today's tutorials and create an MQTT switch in Home Assistant. Just as a quick reminder, when we configured the logo for MQTT communications, we define two different topics, one for publishing the logo data and another one that our logo listens to or subscribes to, as you can see on the screen. So before we add an MQTT switch to the Home Assistant YAML file, let's analyze the MQTT topics and its payload to ensure we fully understand the JSON data or JSON object being published by our logo. This is very important because we have to determine the correct JSON payload format required to publish to the topic that we define in the Logos of Comfort that our logo is listening to. To begin, let's open an MQTT client such as MQTTX or MQTT Explorer or any other MQTT client that you feel comfortable working with and monitor the topics that we've configured in our logo. So here, as you can see on the screen, I have subscribed to two topics that we configured in the Logos of Comfort. One is logo forward slash pop, and the other one is logo forward slash sub. So let's just connect to the MQTT broker and monitor the values that are coming to these topics. So as you can see, my logo is successfully publishing the data to this topic, which I define as logo forward slash pop. So at a first glance, you might get confused and may ask where this data is coming from and how can I customize this JSON payload so I can see my favorite or required data and how can I publish some data to this topic so I can control my logo. You can find the answer to this question from previous video as I mentioned before, but to summarize, this data was configured in my logo of comfort software. It's a JSON object with nested key value pairs containing some internal memory bits and two analog inputs. That's how I configure it. But if you are a visual person like myself and prefer a graphical representation of data instead of plain JSON text, let me introduce you to a very useful extension for Visual Studio Code that can help you better understand complex JSON objects for the purpose of this video or, or any other application that you need to understand complex JSON data. Okay, to use the mention extension in Visual Studio Code, let's first install it in Visual Studio Code. So I'm just going to open my Visual Studio Code and then I'm going to browse through the extensions and from here, just search for JSON crack. As you can see, I have already installed it, but if you haven't done it before, make sure you click on the install button from here. Now that the JSON crack extension is installed in Visual Studio Code, let's copy the JSON data from the MQTTX and paste it into Visual Studio Code to get a visual representation of the JSON data. 
So now I'm just pasting the JSON data to my Visual Studio code. And if you have installed the JSON crack successfully, you should have this extra icon on your top menu. So I'm just going to enable JSON crack visualization. So as you can see from this graphical representation, the data that is being published by our logo contains a nested key values JSON object. So as you can see, in a very high level, we have the state key and the value is another object which is reported. Within the reported value, we have several other objects based on the data area that you have configured in your Logosoft Comfort. So as you can see here, I have configured the data transfer area in my logo to use the internal memory bits of M1, M2, M3, and M4 in addition to two analog values AI1 and AI2. And as you can see, each of these individual objects will have a pair of information which are description and a value. So overall, as you can see, this extension in Visual Studio Code makes the understanding of any complex JSON data very easy. So now let's use the MQTT client to manually confirm that publishing a message to the relevant topic changes the logo's output state. This is a very crucial step before going to the home assistant because if we send the wrong payload format or schema, the logo won't understand it and will disregard the message. So I'm going to use my MQTT client software to publish some values to logo forward slash subtopic to make sure the outputs are working. So as you can see here, my logo demo kit has four LED indicator to show the current status of Q1 to Q4. So if my MQTT communication is configured properly, with sending a right JSON payload, we should be able to control Q1 to Q4. So it is important to publish the value to logo forward slash sub or to any other topic that you define in Logosoft Comfort in the subscription section, not in the publish section. So at this moment, I'm just going to change the value of N1 to one and pay attention to here to Q1. As you can see, the Q1 value turned to on. Let's just turn it off again. And just as an extra test, let's make sure we can control all four LEDs from the MQTT client software. Okay, as you can see, all four LEDs are on at the moment and with sending a zero value, we can turn them all off. Okay, as you can see, everything works as we want. Now it's the time to create an MQTT switch in Home Assistant to control the output from a dashboard. Similar to the MQTT sensor that we created for two analog inputs of our logo, we need to define the MQTT switch in the YAML file to be able to interact with digital data. Based on the Home Assistant's documentation, here is the template to create an MQTT switch. As you can see, there are several attributes and options that you can use to add more functionality to your MQTT switch, but I'll stick to the minimum option needed to turn Q1 to Q4 on or off. After navigating to your Home Assistant dashboard or administration console by entering the IP address of your device followed by the port number of 8123, you can start adding your MQTT switch. So if you remember from the previous video, the first step is to go into file editor. And from here, I can edit different YAML files or any other files that are important for configuration in Home Assistant. So the first section is what we added in the previous video. If you remember, we added a sensor for monitoring or adding two analog inputs of the logo to the Home Assistant platform. So similarly here, based on the template from the documentation of the Home Assistant, we can add four different switches to control the status of Q1 to Q4. 
So as you can see, it's not very complicated, but to deal with the logo data, as we saw in the MQTT client application, you have to publish a JSON object or payload with this schema or format. If you send anything extra or less than this, your logo will not recognize the data and will disregard it. So as you can see at the first line, we just say we want to create a switch and then we will give our switch a name. So here I just gave them four different names, logo Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And then I'm going to specify the command topic, which in my case is logo forward slash SOP. Then I'm going to have a value template. This is what Home Assistant uses to show the status of this MQTT switch. And then I have to specify the payload on and off data. That means if I use the Home Assistant dashboard to control the status of the switch to turn it on and off, this data will be sent to the logo or will be published to this topic that we specified here. So we can interact with the physical output in my case. I just kept it as simple as possible. As I mentioned, there are many options that you can use to improve your switch. But for now, this is enough for me and I just need to save my YAML file. And after reloading your configuration file or by restarting your Home Assistant, your switches are ready to be used in your Home Assistant dashboards. As you can see, I have created a simple dashboard in my Home Assistant to visualize the value of analog input one and two and also I added these four different buttons to control the status of my Q1 to Q4. So adding different cards to the Home Assistant dashboard is pretty simple. To get us started, just click on this pencil icon or edit the dashboard. And then you can add different cards to your dashboard. For example, here I just want to add a gauge. And then in the entity, I will just search for my logo. For example, logo one, and then I hit the save. And that is how simple it is to add a graphical object on your Home Assistant dashboard. So now let's test our system and see how things would work. We already tested the analog inputs one and two, but because in this video, I just added these two historical trends, let's see how they work. So as you can see here on the physical device, if I change the value of analog input one, the changes will be reflected on my graphical dashboard. Similarly, I can change the value of analog input 2. And as you can see, it works as it should. So now let's start testing our MQTT switches that we just added. I just use different icons. For example, this could be a representative of a valve, a pump or a fan and a door or anything that you can think of. If everything goes well, if I click on this button, Home Assistant will send the payload that I defined to my logo. And the status of my logo output will be changed. So let's just test them out. So as you can see from this dashboard, I can control my logo outputs. For sure, I can use the Home Assistant mobile application to control the output of my logo as well. So now we can use our logo as a device in the Home Assistant automations, routines. For example, in my home automation, I have this push button that is activated by single press, double press or line hold. And this is a Zigbee device. It's not MQTT or Wi-Fi or anything else. Let's just use this device to control the Q1, Q2 and so on. So to get us started, I'm just going to my automation and scenes. So as you can see, I have two different automations defined. The first automation will be activated when I single press my Zigbee button. So let's see what's inside this automation. When I short press my Zigbee button, my logo Q1 will be toggled. And similarly, in the other automation, if I double press my Zigbee button, the status of Q2 will be toggled. So now let's test our integration and let's control the status of the logo outputs using the Zigbee button. So as you can see, if I single press my Zigbee button, 
the Q1 status will be changed. And if I double press my Zigbee button, the Q2 value should be changed. So there you have it. I hope this video was helpful and now you know how to send control commands from a home assistant dashboard to a logo. You can use these commands as triggers or set points in your logo logic to build different applications. And as always, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and please support us by following our LinkedIn page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. And until the next time, have a great day or night.